Hi, today we're going to talk about Jillian Michaels talking about Ozempic. And when we talk about Ozempic today, we're going to be talking about all the GLP-1 weight loss medications as a whole, not singling out one or the other. So when I say Ozempic or she does, we're, we're basically talking about the group of medications. She even says, Google it if you don't believe me, which I did. And we're going to discuss that. I'll be stopping the video along the way. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay, let's watch this. Who is now, I've heard nothing but encomiums about Ozempic, yeah. but... I trust that you've done the research. What What is your... Yeah. So so the first thing is you don't need to trust me because I, I am not transacting in opinions. Right, right. So I am simply outlining the facts for people, encouraging you to Google it, do Which your own homework on the things right. that I say, right. and then make the decision for yourself. Right. So I want to back into this one and give you our best case scenario. Instead of being like, ah, and then your, your butt's going to fall off your body. Okay, let's back into it. You are one of the 50% that has zero side effects. I feel great. Never felt better. Now, those are really good odds. 50%. I think she's just ballparking that. But 50% of the people don't have any bad, bad. I mean, that's pretty good odds to try to, um, to do that. So that's it, 50% has zero side effects? At least 50% are going to have gastrointestinal issues. Vomiting, constipation, okay, diarrhea, sure. and then right. it gets more nefarious. But I'm, I'm okay. backing into it, you know, right. from, the, from the sunlight here, right? Okay. Before we get into stomach paralysis, intestinal blockage, and oh, pancreatitis. So those are going. other... Oh, so that's... Oh, well, shit. I'm not, I haven't even gone there yet for we'll you. We'll go there. We're going the best... First, I'm going to tell you what your best case is. Your best case scenario. Oh, I feel great. I have, I have no symptoms. Amazing. Right. I've lost a ton of weight. Right. Amazing. Okay. Now we're 18 months into it and you will plateau. It's not a question. Right. It's not my opinion. Sure. It's fact. Hashtag let me Google that for you. Right. Yes. So now you've plateaued. The other thing I think people decide to interject, but people sometimes don't know is that many drugs have, we would call it in politics, a sunset clause. Like they end. Like... I know someone who's on, you know, they have a pill for lung cancer and it does amazing things. But so talking about plateauing, I did Google that. That is very, very, very common it, with any weight loss program. You're going to hit plateaus with this particular medic, these particular medications. You can't go over a, a certain dosage when it gets there. You're not going any farther and your body only needs to lose a certain amount of weight. Your body gets into homeostasis and that's all the scientific stuff. But this is true. What they're saying here is very true. It does sunset. The body it, is it does static. It does stop working at some point. It, for that reason, right? The body is like, oh, we've right. been doing this exogenously. So I'm going to make some endogenous adjustments. Right. And you will find homeostasis. Right. Not a question. So now... You have and just to stop again, the sunset clause that he was speaking of, I believe he is mistaken calling it the sunset clause. Everything I could find, that sunset clause has to do with medications and the marketing of medications. And it may have to do with, um, you know, brand name, brands coming out with a product and there cannot be a, another... Um, there can't be a, a generic of it for so many months or years. And I think that's what he's referring to, but I'm not positive. Have a plateau and right. it stops working. Right. Okay. Well, you can't get off of it ever. And all of the meta-analysis, all of them show that you will gain all of the weight back two thirds within the first year alone. And then some hashtag quote, devastating weight regain rebound. Yo, yo, Yo-yo dotting. So let me just interject here because I didn't have to look this up. I know this and I'll just give you what happened to me. I went on a major weight loss program 
to only lose like 10 pounds. I didn't even need to lose that much weight. I was working out all the time, teaching fitness classes, um, hiking, running, all this, all the things, right? And I, but I wanted to be smaller, but you know, I'm, I'm older, so it's not really that important, right? It's just not that 10 pounds is just not that important. But I did this weight loss program knowing that when I stopped, there was going to be a rebound and a weight gain. I knew that, but I was going to be different. I can beat this thing, right? It didn't work. I got off the, I got off of the diet plan. I gradually started gaining weight and then I just started, I just gained it back. Right. And the thing with like Ozempic, if you don't change your eating habits, well, you change your eating habits because you can't even stand to eat anymore. Really a, a lot of people and you don't feel like eating, but you have to have a diet that's sustainable. And a thousand dollars a month for anybody who who their insurance won't pay for this, that's not sustainable. The drug was in the Ozempic is for people with diabetes, right? Diabetics take it, it levels off their sugar. You also lose weight. Now it's gotten in the hands of Hollywood and you know, and even Oprah's got a special Oprah's got a special coming up uh this weekend, I think, about these miracle, you know, the miracle weight loss drugs after she's been through, maybe we'll do a whole show on that, how she's been through, you know, the drinking the protein drinks and Weight Watchers and, you know, rebound, you talk about rebounding, but when you stop any kind of major diet, you, you're going to rebound. Like she's saying, she hasn't said anything in this that I didn't find to be true doing research or my own you know, my own experiences. Dieting on crack. I can tell you all the mechanisms for which so this why, is happening. So why isn't this being talked about more? Why are you, and this one, you're the pioneer getting. Yeah, here's the problem. All of the doctors quietly that I work with on the DL feed me the information. But the problem is some of them are at Stanford. Some of them are sure. at Harvard. No, no, they it's, get it's, grant money from these companies. No, and also, people uh, the, people are such sheep. And once this became like the miracle drug, you know, I call it the one true opinion, then that becomes anointed as the one true opinion. And a lot of media is in the pocket. You know, I used to do 65% bits. 65% funded well, to, by Big Pharma. I used to do a bit in my act about the evening news that uh, it was very funny. I wish I could remember it. But it was basically that every, it's not the news that made me want to, kill myself every night. It was the commercials. Everything was people who I can't shed. I can't, okay. I can't, I can't but you breathe. Know that I that commercial? All ads for pharmaceutical. The narrative though, Bill. But pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical drugs fund, funded the night. I don't know Higher if they still thing. do. Top 65% you know, restless of leg dollars. syndrome. 100%. And, you know, hundred percent pills that you, you don't even know what they're selling. It's just some chick in a wheat field. Like, and she's like, she. So basically the pharmaceutical companies are funding our news. Now, I did look this up, and pharmaceutical companies give doctors incentives such as free trips, meals, gifts, and other incentives to promote their products. And they get, you know, there was a time when a lot of that stopped, but I think it's changed a little bit how they pay doctors to prescribe name brand medications. And then they've got the in 2020, the pharmaceutical industry spent 4.58 million, no, no, billion, 4.58 billion U.S. dollars on advertising on national TV in the United States, surprisingly representing a big shift in spending compared to 2019 pre-COVID market. In 2020, TV ad spending of the pharma industry accounted for 75% of the total ad spend. That's a lot of money. And then they're going to go on to talk about some other ways that doctors get money. So they funnel money a little bit differently than they used to, supposedly. Um, used to, doctors would just get, you know, oh, here's Super Bowl tickets or something. And now I think they have to do things a little bit differently. But it's still pharmaceutical companies are huge business. Think about, th think about now that COVID is you know, calm down. I won't say it's over, but 
they say it's over, but you know, now that it's just considered like the flu, then Pfizer and these other companies that made these, uh, the people call them the jab, but anyway, the COVID vaccines are, you know, they're, they're losing that income. So they're on to the next thing. He looks happy and it's like, get this shit. You'll be happier. Okay, but here's what they're actually buying. They're buying the episode of 60 Minutes where Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford, who's a paid right. spokesperson for Novo Nordisk, is parroting research paid for by Novo Nordisk. And the anchor is like, mm-hmm, uh-huh. Oh. No, mm -hmm. it, I mean. The, it, it, it's insanity. Again, it's It's like a commercial very, for the drug. What I was saying before, people are scared. This is a subject that scares them. They want to believe the people in the white coats are pure and they have the answers and they couldn't be corrupt. And it, they spend it's, tens yes. of millions and it's a buying business. doctors. It people, is, unhealthy people is also a business. I'm not saying that they're twirling their mustache and flaunting their cape and just plotting to this it's specifically. It's got a compound but, annual growth rate of yeah, 9% just, as an industry. Okay, so, you know, everything that she said is correct. I will put that segment from Bill Maher in. I'll put it below in the description so you can go watch that whole thing. Google it yourself. I've been saying that these drugs are not the solution to everything for everybody. I've been saying it. I've been, you know, and before Oprah came out and said that she wasn't on, she said, I'm not on the medications. And then it seemed like the next day, but it was a few, few weeks later, I think she's all about, you know, oh, I, this is how I lost my weight. We already knew that she did and now she's leaving Weight Watchers and donating all her stock to um I don't remember a school or something and so and then she's got the TV special coming up about it and I'm glad she's lost the weight I'm happy for her I'm happy for everybody who's gone on Ozempic and feels good there have been a lot of stories about a lot of bad things about these medications and so I'm just trying to give y'all a balanced look at it here. Um, you know, take care of yourself and don't get caught up in and don't get caught up in something that is going to damage you. I mean, when they came out with Oxycontin, you can go watch the movies about that or read about that. And the the doctor, the doctors were getting paid directly for how much they for how much they gave, you know, how much they, they scripted for. And the more milligrams script, the script was the prescription, the more money they got. Now, I think that might be what slowed down this paying, paying doctors, but I think it still happens. She says it's still happening. I don't know that for a fact. I'm not here to tell you that's a fact, but I'm assuming that she's, what she said, the rest of the video was all the truth too. I appreciate y'all watching. If you could give me a, a thumbs up and also how about subscribing if you haven't. I'm coming up with a lot of new content and I really like uh, interaction. If y'all want to comment below and let me know what you think, what you think about the, if you've had any experiences with the medication, I'd love to hear, hear that in the comments. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon.